Do you remember that story about Aladdin and a genie from when you were a kid? I know my generation does with the hit Disney movie Aladdin back in the 90s. It's a story that captivates the mind of every listener, prompting everyone in the audience to ask, if I had three wishes, what would they be? Keeping in mind that the first rule is that you can't wish for infinite wishes. Anyways, this mystical story goes that Aladdin discovers a cave called the Cave of Wonders out in the desert one night. He lights a torch, girds his loins, and creeps in to discover this newly opened cave. Before long, he realizes that this is a stash of treasure from somebody, probably bandits. It's a trove of treasure beyond anything he has ever seen before. Maybe even anything anybody has ever seen before. From every angle, jewels and gold coins reflect the light from his torch. In complete awe and under his breath, he mutters, Just a handful of this stuff would make me richer than the Sultan. As his spelunking continues, Aladdin decides that he has to see it all. He creeps into the cave deeper and deeper until he finally reaches a giant staircase, leading up to the crowning treasure of the stash. You know this scene. It's not too different from Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark, where he picks up an ancient gold figurine, eventually getting chased down by a giant boulder. And, well, the Disney movie, Aladdin, portrays it happening this way, too. Deep in the far end of the cave, up a giant staircase, there sits the famous and magic lamp. He makes his way up. As he lifts the lamp, the monkey, a character in the Disney movie, that's an addition from the original story from the tales of the Arabian, Ni Arabian Nights, lifts a giant jewel, and all of a sudden, a deep, dark, ominous voice echoes to the once silent cave, you will never again see the light of day. And just like Indiana Jones, they make a run for it. Aladdin and his pet monkey ride out as fast as they can on a magic carpet, panicking as boulders fall, the cave collapses, and even though it was so close to them escaping, with the light of the moon and their view at the entrance of the cave, it all collapses in and they are trapped. Unlike Indiana Jones, they don't get away. In the movie, they only stay trapped for a minute. In the book, they are there in the dark for what seems like days or weeks. An eternity of dark silence is what Aladdin's life has become. That is at least until Aladdin accidentally rubs the lamp and out swirls what we know to be the genie. Yes, we all know this scene. And I'm sure that most of us can still hear Robin Williams' voice singing, Never Had a Friend Like Me. And of course, we all know what happens. The genie explains, I don't think you realize what you've got here. Three wishes. Anything Aladdin wants. Boy, can we relate, huh? Three wishes. I know you've spent some of your own time wondering what you would spend your three wishes on. Myself, I'm still trying to figure out a loophole into getting infinite wishes. The reason I share this famous story with you again today is because in our gospel reading, the disciples are trying to use Jesus like a genie. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant us to visit, to sit, 
one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Just like Jafar, the evil wizard in the Disney movie, they are seeking power and glory that is beyond what this world can offer. They see Jesus as their ticket to no more earthly suffering. They say Jesus is their genie who they can control. But as we know, this isn't going to work because Jesus isn't a genie. In the very next chapter of the book of Mark, Jesus will say to his disciples, So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. It's no wonder that the disciples see it this way. See that they can use Jesus and his name for whatever they desire. But as we can see from the story, that's not how it works. They being denied what they ask for because it is not in line with the kingdom of God or God's ways. Their selfish desires are not tolerated. The problem with using Jesus as a genie is that behind it all, what we still really hope, as if we haven't learned from the book of Genesis and the Garden of Eden story yet, what we really hope is that we can be the gods. That we can speak into creation anything we desire. We want to have complete control over everything. We want to be the reason the sun rises. And though it is hard to admit, we do want to have every one of our wishes granted by God. It is an I know best. I am in charge. I am the greatest mentality. And this is nothing short of placing ourselves higher than God. Using God to get what we want. Making God a pawn in our game of control and dominance. Yes, I don't care who of us denies it. We all want three wishes. We all want to use Jesus like our own little wish puppet. Granting everything we desire. Our existence on earth can too often feel like we are Aladdin sitting in a dark and silent cave. And we would do anything to finally get out. Sometimes, whether we think it's coming from a good place or a bad place, we want to use Jesus as a genie. But the problem with this, as we already know, really is just the desire to be God and get whatever we want. You get this. Just think about Aladdin and the lamp. Who's in control? It's not the genie. The genie bends to the whim and desire of its owner. In the person and genie relationship, we are the ones who get served. In your own person and God relationship, how is that supposed to work? Are you the one who gets served? Is that why we believe in God, so that we can get what we want? I don't think so. In the gospel today, Jesus corrects his disciples when they try and use God as a way to get what they want. Jesus stops them from using God and wanting to place God under their own authority. Jesus explains to those who try and take advantage of him, who try and seek dominance through him. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life for a ransom for many. Jesus explains again to these foolish disciples that they still have it backwards. Jesus explains that he is offering them more than what they want for themselves. Instead of seats of honor and glory, he is sharing with them a new way to live life. 
not one like the country club experience that they want, but instead one of service like him. Sure, they want to be gods. They want to have complete control over it all. But that is absolutely not what being a disciple of Jesus is all about. We are the followers of the greatest one. God, who lowered God's self in Jesus Christ to be the servant of humanity. We are the followers of the greatest servant of all. If we, like the disciples, are still in that place of, I wonder what I can get from God. We've missed the whole point. It has never been about what we can get. It is instead about the question, what can we give? God's not our genie. That would mean that we are happy using God to serve our own needs. That would mean that we are God, and God is not. So, servant of Christ, servant of the greatest servant, if you had three wishes, what would they be? Amen.